reading of the scripture. So before I go into the sermon, let me just introduce a little bit of who World Vision is. I think the slide. All right. How many of you know who World Vision is? Maybe I can see a raise of hands. Have you heard of it? Besides knowing that all my colleagues are wearing orange in color. <laughs> Anybody else? All right, okay, there's a number of you. So World Vision is actually an international... Sorry? Okay, thank you. World Vision is in an international Christian organization. So we are an organization dedicated to actually um, working with the children and families um, who are vulnerable and overcome extreme poverty for each and every one of them. And we also work to promote um, human transformation in their lives as well and seek justice to the oppressed. And not only that, we also demonstrate the love of God to all the people around there, especially the vulnerable. And World Vision actually impacted quite a number of lives. I would say up to today, there's about 200 million people and vulnerable children who were blessed by World Vision Works. And not only that, um, the various development that we do is also humanitarian um, doing and also emergency relief programs. We have so many staff around 100 over countries. World Vision is in now today. It is actually one of the largest relief organizations in the world. So that's just the basic of who we are. You can take a look there. And the next one is, sorry. World Vision, uh, when I talk about the root causes of poverty, and our mission, what is our basic mission? World Vision is actually an international partnership of Christians whose mission is actually to follow our Lord Jesus Christ. And in working with the poor and oppressed to also promote human transformation in various ways as well. And not only that, our vision actually stands from John 10.10. 10. If you have your Bibles with you, whether you have it in physical or also your phones, you can take a look at John chapter 10, verse 10. That's where our vision comes from. Our vision for every child is life in its, all its fullness. Our prayer for every heart, the will to make it so. So it's inspired by John chapter 10, verse 10. And the next one is our works. Our works actually um, is categorized into three main key points, which is the first one will be community transformation. So what do we say about community transformation? We actually help the poor themselves by working with them to build a sustainable life for each and every one of them. And not only that, it's also for their future of their children, family, and also communities. And the next key will be relief where we actually assist people in conflicts or disasters. So if you actually remember, there was the previous Turkey and Syria disaster. World Vision was actually there to help them as well. And the last but not least is advocacy. So advocacy actually seeks to address the structural and systematic causes of poverty and injustice by actually challenging policies, practices and also attitudes that perpetuate inequality and deny justice. So this is our main three core strengths of our works, community transformation, relief and also advocacy. And I would like to also share with you all our teachings and our core values that we are actually Christian, a Christian organization. We follow the teachings of Jesus who calls us to love our neighbors, not only ourselves but also um, pour out the love that God gave us to also the people and the vulnerable people around. And we also seek to actually follow Jesus in his identification with the poor people. And not only that, the powerless, the afflicted, oppressed, and all those who are in need. And God's love for all the people without discrimination to any one of them. And the last one, uh, I would like to say a little bit about our story. Our story is a story of Faith, hope, and love. So if you actually know in the Bible, Jesus was known to spend his time with those living in the fringes of society in the Bible. And always seeing potential in those who are vulnerable. He actually leaves out an example to motivate us to live and love at the ages. And also to find potential in transformation in the toughest situation all around the world. And Jesus actually presented a radical different view of how life is and how society would like be. He actually said that he came that everyone 
would have the fullness of life. That's why our vision is based on John 10.10. 10. Jesus came so that we will have fullness of life. So this actually gives us a glimpse of how things could be and motivate us to work for justice so that everyone may experience the fullness of life with no one left behind. And we believe that the power of love has the love to overcome it all. And that sets a standard for us as World Vision to be inspired and also aspire today to love all the people who are vulnerable as well. And the last one will be sponsored and sponsored child. Would you like to just touch a little bit of this? It's a relationship that actually helps the entire community to lift up poverty. And we actually work in seven key different areas. The sponsors actually champion kids in seven key areas. So the first one would be Christian discipleship, you can see on the slide. And the next one will be mother and child health, economic empowerment, education, where kids get to go to school, Clean water, they have access. Just now you all did the quiz. And then child protection and lastly, emergency relief. So all these seven keys are very important in World Vision as we strive to make a better life for the vulnerable children. So before um, I go to my sermon, if you all have any questions or inquiries about World Vision, I'm pretty sure all my colleagues behind there in Orange will be more than glad to also give you more information about it after service. Yes, so now let's move on to the Word of God. Today my title is taken from Matthew 25, verse 31 to 46, where there's a sister that read it just now. <laughs> Over there, yeah, thank you for reading it just now. So I wouldn't have to be reading it one more time. So today, um, I'll be talking about love and compassion to the least of these. So greatness in the kingdom of heaven is recognized by simple act of kindness and love and compassion. So demonstrating the love and kindness and compassion of Jesus Christ by reaching out to the least of these among us. So as, as you actually read just now at verse 40, it mentioned very clearly to the least of these. So now let us read again chapter 25 verse 40. I would like to read that last verse. If you can take a look at your Bibles. Chapter 40. The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these, brothers and sisters of mine, you did it for me. Let us pray. Father Lord, even as we come to you today, even as we sit in your presence in this wonderful Sunday morning, we thank you for being with us today, your presence with us today, O God. And Lord, even as um, we come to you today, O God, let us have open hearts and open minds to also listen to your word, O God. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. So if you can take a look at the passage, this passage clearly talks about what and how God wants us to do with our life, to overflow with mercy, love, and also compassion. And as followers of Jesus, we actually have a choice. What do you mean choice? Whether we respond to unsettling fear and avoidance, or to actually follow Him, Him meaning Jesus, in responding to the greatest needs with hope and love. We know salvation doesn't depend on works, but we also know that caring for those in need is evidence of faith that changes lives. And the first key I would like to talk about is loving the least of these. Very simple, but if you actually take a look at verses 34 to 40, it's very powerful. Here in the verses, we actually find the king addresses those on his right he calls sheep. And he actually tells them because they fed the hungry, they gave drink to those who are thirsty. They also invited strangers and helped them. They clothed the naked. They visited the sick and imprisoned. And they will also inherit eternal life by doing so. And those on the right were actually shocked. And they said, Lord, when did we actually see you hungry or thirsty? Or did we clothe you when you were naked or sick or even in prison? Or even take care of you? They actually asked God. But Jesus tell them whenever they actually responded to the needs of one of the least of these, you are responding to him. Here I say again in Matthew chapter 25, verse 40, Truly I tell to you, 
Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it for me. And in the Message Bible, it actually reads and says, I'm telling the solemn truth. Whenever you did one of these things to someone overlooked or ignored, that was me. You did it for me. And let me just ask all of us here, seated right here on this very Sunday morning, how about us today? Even myself, I will also ask myself, are we doing the same? Am I doing the same? Are we loving and having compassion to the least of these? So this question is a good food for thought for today. And throughout the Bible, Jesus actually greatly expanded the scope and importance of love, saying that love of God and love of fellow men are the most important of the commandments. The Apostle Paul actually also said that Christian love is the most essential of all spiritual gifts as well. And throughout the New Testament, we are encouraged to live in peace and also all God's people and also to commit ourselves to genuine love and care. And that is why walking in love is important as children of light, meaning children of God. And however, if you want to walk in love today, we'll have to make a decision. And what decision is it? It's to give in to the love of God that God has given to us and also share it out to everybody else. So the love of God that He gave us is not for us to keep it to ourselves, for me, myself, and I, but it's for us to walk it out to walk out in love, to reach out to the least of these. And Matthew 25 actually illustrates the shocking death of Jesus' love for the entire human race. His identifications, God's identification with the least of these is so profound that when we actually reach out to them with love, it is Jesus himself who we are loving and embracing today. And living out the great commandment in the ways described in Matthew 25 today, catalyzes the Great Commission. Why I say so? Because when people experience the love of Christ through our deeds, it prepares them to hear the message of Christ through our words. I say it again. When people experience the love of Christ through our deeds, it prepares them to hear the message of Christ through our words. So if we want to be agents of the Great Commission today, first of all, we must be agents of Great Commandment. We must do it so. And being close to Christ, meaning you are being close to the poor as well. And caring for people in this way signals whose side, we've, whose side we are at, which is God's side. And who desperately, God actually desperately loves all people. And when we demonstrate love to this world, kindness, compassion, justice, we actually open the way and the message of a saviour, our God, that transforms men and women for all eternity. And this leads us to the next point, which is compassion for the least of this. To be compassionate is to feel deeply for another person. And as they experience their ups and downs in various things in life, To be compassionate is not only just to tell somebody that you care, but also to show them that you care by being there for them. And not only that, it's to help them in whatever we can. And looking back at verse 40, what does the phrase, the least of this, mean? It does not mean that some humans are less valuable than others, as if there's actually a hierarchy in human race or the worth of human, whether the wealthy and self-sufficient are at the top, and while others such as the poor and mentally and materially, financially dependent are at the bottom. It does not mean that when it says the least of this. But what it actually meant was that the least of the brothers and sisters are those who are vulnerable. So all the human beings on earth have the same inherent worth and value. Why do I say that? Because they all have the same nature, which is a human nature. In other words, if you actually trace back to the very first book in the Bible, Genesis, 
It's taken from Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 27. It says that all humans are made in the image of God. In other words, all humans are equal. So the least of the brothers and sisters of Jesus are those persons who are vulnerable today. They are socially, psychologically, economically disadvantaged, such as the sick, the poor, the mentally and physically disabled. And God's compassion, I would say today, has no boundaries at all. Not at all. And He met the people at their point of need. And His compassion is actually to all humankind. In being Christ-like in the present day, today, we too can actually share the whole of God's mission in different ways by demonstrating God's compassion to the people around us in the world we live in by allowing our actions, what we do every day, to actually match the words, words of God in the Bible. And we can demonstrate it very effectively of revealing, and the way how we do it is by revealing God and making Him known to the people. How? Through how we exemplify Christ to the people around us. The motivation for God's mission is actually love and compassion. The church motivation must also be love, a love that has no condition attached at all, nothing at all, or even targets to be met. Just pure love freely given, the way how God actually gave His love for us. And verse 34 to 40 of Matthew chapter 25 actually clearly says that Jesus commands and rewards those who follow his example by ministering to those who are less fortunate than us. And the punchline of this whole entire parable, parable, you can actually take a look at the entire Matthew 25, even for, from verses 1 all the way up to the end of the chapter. It clearly tells a very great punchline where it says that, says that in as much as you did it to the one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you did it for me. You're not doing it for your own self, but you are doing it for God. And as we launch Matthew, chapter, um, Matthew 25 challenge today, I would like to challenge each and every one of us here today to experience this week-long challenge. And before I actually go into detail about it, let us watch a video today. Then the king would say to those on his right, Come, you are blessed by my father. Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you give me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you give me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when do we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When do we see you a stranger and invited you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When do we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. 在门去挑战马太二十五里面呢，我们在这个睡这个地板的情况之下呢，我们不能够侧睡，是非常辛苦的一件事情。但是我回想到那些没有床睡的孩子们，他们这样子睡的情况之下是非常痛苦的一件事
we're able to engage in a, in a way that we hadn't done before. And I think it's easy to read a scripture, but another thing is to actually feel the scripture. And so I think the, the greatest thing for us was that we actually felt the scriptures. It gave us a vision for something bigger than ourselves. It energized our church to reframe the whole idea of gift giving and sharing. And it just kind of reinforced you've got all this affluence, all this stuff that really doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. Specifically one lady, uh, she decided to take the challenge for several days after. Every time she will see me, she will just break in tears. She was something inside really touched her. Something as simple as taking one day and sleep on the floor. Yeah, I think that the Matthew 25 challenge has really helped our church to realise how fortunate we are living in a country that has no war and has so many resources. If I got a call from another church leader saying, hey, I heard you did the Matthew 25, what do you think? I'd say do it. It's as easy as that. Don't even think about it. Just get on board and do it. Thank you for playing the video. All right. All right. Today, as we launch the Matthew 25 challenge, for seven days, you can experience different various things by stepping out of your comfort zone. And during the week when you actually participate, you will actually receive text messages when doing this challenge. So this is the daily challenges that you will go through. Monday, you can skip your lunch. Tuesday, you can give up all except water, means you don't drink coffee or whichever. And the third day, you can try sleeping on the floor. And Thursday, you wear the same clothes. I don't know whether anybody tried that before, but it's a good challenge. I can see some of your faces, it's like, um, <laughs> wear the same clothes, okay? Friday, you can reach out to different people uh, going through difficult times. And Saturday, you take a 30-minute prayer walk to pray for those who are vulnerable. So um, although it may look very simple, but to some of us, as you do it, it can be quite challenging. The first time when I went through it, the hardest one for me was to wear the same clothes the entire day because I change like from morning to afternoon and then at night. So for me to wear the same clothes, it's like, I feel a bit, ee. <laughs> so, so on the girls here, you are, I can see your faces like, mm. <laughs> okay, I'm going to think twice. But this is a great challenge to go through. And you can actually collect the collection card right after service. It looks something like this. And what do you do with this? You actually place it on your fridge. Why? So you don't forget. Because in the morning, sometimes the first thing that we ever do is go to the fridge, take a look at what you're going to drink. Maybe I want to make a coffee, drink milk. And then when you saw it, oh, today I will only drink water and not milk and coffee. So you can actually take this outside as well. And here you have some family activity guide. If you would like to have it, you can definitely reach out to us. We will give you some. At the same time, I think Pastor Matthew has a copy as well. He can share it with you. And these are family-friendly activities. In the whole entire guide, you get to see and do it with your families. Not only that, you, when you receive the SMS text, you get to learn about stories around the world, how people are going through life, the vulnerable children, and then you can learn about different items like the global hunger and also global water crisis and different other items as well. And the next slide. So if you have your phones with you, you can pull out your phone today and then you scan this exact QR code right here. And the next step, you can register. So once you actually register, you will receive an SMS text from World Vision to indicate that you are already registered. So this is how it looks like on the right-hand side. It will say, congratulations, you have officially signed up. You don't have to do it exactly now, but later after service, you can head on to our booth and also sign up for Matthew chapter 25 challenge. And by doing so also, it will be a great opportunity to relieve Matthew 20, chapter 25. And I would like to just encourage each and every one of us here today. I pray that our eyes will open up to the realities that many vulnerable children are facing right here today. So maybe you can turn off the slide first and to search and ask our hearts right today. 
whether we are keeping the love all to ourselves or we are actually sharing and caring it with others who are in need today. There's so much in this passage, Matthew 25. One, Jesus' identification with his people. And not only that, when you serve brothers and sisters in Christ, you are serving Christ himself. What a powerful picture of Jesus' identification for his people. And not only that, to love, to care, to provide, to lay down, and also lay down our lives for one another. Not only one another, but all those people that we meet and all those news that we hear about people needing help as well. And as we pray according to this passage today, Matthew 25, let us ask ourselves deep in our hearts, what does this need to look like today? What does this need to look like today in our lives? Do we just receive from God all the love from God and just keep it in ourselves? Or we'll be like a fountain overflowing God's love to others. Because God actually gave us the love not only for ourselves, but it's also for other people to experience Him and to get to know Him. Let me end by just sharing with you a short story. So this story is about a lady. Her name is Esnard. So Esnard's husband died in 1999, leaving her to care for her children and elderly mother. Her husband is actually the main sole provider, means he provides everything. Food, clothes, going to school, expenses. And her son actually said this when her dad died, that his whole story of life turned upside down. Why? Because now he doesn't have clothes to wear. He doesn't have food on his table. He doesn't have proper water to drink. And every day has changed entirely. And Esnard actually asked herself, why are her children going through this whole entire scenario? And what is she going to do? How is her child going to go to school? Will she be able to see her child at the greatest potential, reaching his greatest potential in life? And in 2004, she actually um, came across World Vision, and that's where she received help. So what she received was four chickens and one rooster. And when she actually heard that, just four chickens yeah, and one rooster, she was really overjoyed. She was so happy and she actually thanked God. Wow, thank God I came across World Vision. And she actually couldn't almost believe it. She was longing to see this day and it actually come. So after a year, the animals that she received was only four chickens and one rooster multiplied to hundreds. She had about 200 roosters, 100 over chickens and also baby chicks. Not only that, she actually sold some of her chickens to invest in goats and also plantation. And with the earnings that she got, she joined the World Vision Saving Groups. What does that mean? It means they teach her how to save and also invest. And now that she's doing a better, slightly better life, Esnard is actually a trainer in World Vision Saving Groups where she actually helped others. She did not only kept it to herself, but she helped others. She helped others, meaning that she helped to start a group, how to save, and she also monitors them and provides suggestions on how to do that. And her son now is able to attend school. The community worker in World Vision actually said that without the goats and the help that she received, her son would not be able to attend school. Can you imagine some of you here are parents, your child just can't go to school because you have not enough money? And your child's education is limited at only one point and it will not be able to reach his or her greatest potential in life. I think that would be a very sad thing to hear. And Esnard actually said at the end of the day, she said this, yeah, My faith has grown so much. It had made me realise that God came like sending His own angel to come before me. This was her very words. And she said, those years I spent struggling and praying to God. 
God heard me and he answered. I would say today from this whole story, as not faith is like a mustard seed. The mustard seed story in the Bible with a relatively small intervention from world vision, four chickens and one rooster only. She knew that this gift could be amplified by God and God did not disappoint. God actually provided great abundance in her life. Socially and spiritually, World Vision has, em- has helped empower the community to thrive. And how were all these possible? I wouldn't say that it's only possible because of World Vision, but it is possible because of World Vision child sponsors, in which each of us can be one as well. And I would say, with a little as 65 ringgit, a month to sponsor a child. It can actually make a huge difference. You may see that, hmm, some of you may be thinking, maybe it's very little, or maybe it's a lot. But just imagine, I think just now I counted, there's roughly about 80 of us here. Yeah, roughly. But let's say if I take the sum of 50 of us here in this church, each of us to take, to partake together, and part together to sponsor one child each which is 65 ringgit a month. And if we actually multiply it by 12 months, which is one year, it will amount up to 780. Why am I actually doing this maths? Give me some time to explain this as I go further. So when you take 780 ringgit and you multiply it by 50 of you here in church, that is a total of 39,000 ringgit. It may seem little, but to a, for a community to thrive, it's a lot. The kids get water, the kids get food. And that is the church collective impact going into one community. 39,000 a year if everyone actually steps up together. So many vulnerable children will have food and drink and water to drink. And when we sponsor one child, not only that child will be, um, will be helped, four other children will also benefit out of it. And looking at the fact that as a church, we can make a significant dent to the community, to the lives of all those who are in need, I think that's just amazing. And as one church, together with your pastors, you all can be this in this together as one. Together, you can make a difference. Together, we can make a difference around the world. And together, we can share the love and compassion to the least of this. The impact is just very wonderful and being able to do this for God is like being the salt and light to the world. And as we go home and take Matthew uh, Matthew 25 challenge, I challenge you to take that challenge and go through it and think about it and also ask ourselves, do we just keep the love of Christ in ourselves today or we actually follow Jesus in responding to the greatest needs around the world. In our day, with hope, love, and compassion. And also before we share shortly next week about how you can participate in child sponsorship, we encourage you to think and pray about how you and your church can work and partner with World Vision together with this to make a difference in the lives of people, the community, and also the vulnerable children around the world. And I would like to say together, let us demonstrate the love and compassion of Jesus Christ to the least of these among us. And I end by saying this, because of God's love for us, for each and every one of you seated right here today, we ask for God's grace to actually love the least of these. Even as you think about it, the next one week when you do the challenge, may I pray that God will actually touch your hearts for the people. Let us pray.